Hi and Assalamualaikum. Today my friend and I would like to present about our group presentation based on the company that we have choose which is Frazel and Nip Holdings Berhad FNN. The first one is company background. It founded by John Frazel and David Chalmers Nip in 1883. FNN also amongst the richest oldest the most established food and beverage companies. FNN is one of the largest beverage manufacturers and distributors. Lastly, this company has three main businesses which are soft drinks, dairy products and property. Next reason why I choose this company because of FNN is today synonymous with high quality halal compliant items that have been trusted by generations. They focus in on halal market and leveraging the country halal hub status. They also caring about social environment and working environment. The last one is FNN relates closely to continuing innovation, cares to consumer health and safety, creating values for society, talent management and sustainable sourcing. Next, Board of Directors. This is the member of Board of Directors for Company FNN which are Independent Non-Executive Director and Non-Independent Non-Executive Director. Non-Independent Non-Executive Director are YM Tengku Syarif Bandahar Belis, Mr. Lee Mentat, Ms. Tan Fun San, Datuk Jorgen Bonhoff and Mr. Hui Jun Kit. And the independent non-executive director are Mr. David Shu Kahtun, Puan Aida, Puan Faridah, Datuk Muhammad Anwar and Datuk Ern Wan Pen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now I will talk about CSR FNN for Community and Workplace Dimensions in 2019. Okay, first we go to the Community Dimension. There are a few program which is first is FNN IT program. FNN continues to provide youth from underprivileged backgrounds at Montfort Boys Town with opportunities to develop their capabilities through the International Computer Driving License Certification course. FNN has so far invested 185,000 ringgit in the program. Next is free kindergarten and tuition classes. This program that provides educational assistance to the children of Pangsapuri Enggang. This program aimed at empowering the children to take ownership of their own learning. FNN has invested 610,000 ringgit in the program. The third program is leadership program for underprivileged youth. This program aims to nurture discipline, develop interpersonal skills, boost self-confidence and encourage teamwork among young residents of Rumah Ilham. FNN has so far invested 145,000 ringgit in the program. Last but not least, One Child One School Back program. This program empowered employees to give back to the community at eight regions which FNN operates in throughout Malaysia by using the funds raised from the FNN Go Green program. So we go to the next dimension which is workplace. There are a few programs which is first is seven habits of highly effective people. This program focus on self-management and interpersonal skills. They targeted for top, middle, junior management and employees. Second is Asian Management Development Program. They focused on leadership and management skills and targeted for top management. Third is Coaching Skills. This program focused on leadership through effective coaching. They targeted for top and middle management. Fourth, Business Acumen. This program focused on driving for business performance. They targeted for top, middle, junior management and employees. Fifth is Education Assistant Program. This program focused on various technical and professional certification and targeted for non-unionized employees. Last but not least is Functional and Technical Training. This program focused on functional and technical skills. They targeted for manufacturing, which is employees that work at factory. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will continue with the CSR associated with environment in 2019. Firstly, FNN in collaboration with Solid Waste Corporation Management in realizing the school recycling programs with all the schools across Malaysia to emphasize the value from environmental conservancy. Other than that, FNN joined with Reef Check Malaysia, Marine Park Terengganu and DM Scuba in the program Save Our Sea with the good purpose of rehabilitation the coral reef and educates the people to protect our beach. Next, FNN also helped the Fit and Nature program in order to encourage Malaysians in living the healthy lifestyle while preserving environmental by jogging together and collecting litter around the place. In line with this campaign, FNN with 100 plus have hold an event which is Hari Active Camp Malaysia 2019. There are many activities held on this day. One of it is 6 km obstacle front run. This event is one of the initiatives taken to strengthen the relationship with all nations while encouraging them to living a healthy lifestyle. Let's move to the marketplace CSR, whereby FNN partnering with 100 plus and legal commentary company Dika Malaysia in grassroots program. This program is to support children all around Malaysia to flourish their football skills. Not only that, FNN also collaborating with Badminton Association of Malaysia in the 100 plus national junior circuit program to drive the young players to success in the tournament. Besides that, FNN is also an official partner for National Sport Council, whereby they will support Malaysian athletes by sponsoring 100 plus as their energy drink to boost their stamina. Last but not least, in developing halal industry, FNN 
Thailand decided to collaborate with Halal Industry Development Corporation through the Halal Sourcing Partnership Program. In this event, FNM will be sharing the knowledge and technical advice with small and medium enterprise. That's all from me. Let's move to the CSR in 2020. Assalamualaikum. I will be talking about the community and workplace in CSR FNN in the year 2020. The first dimension is the community. The first program is the FNN International Computer Driving Lenses Annual Program. In this program, 53 students from the Vocational Training Institute successfully received their ICDL certification in Graphic Design Management and also Computer Management after doing through an intense six module of training. The second program is the Empowering Life Through Education Program. In this program, FNN provides pre-school education to children between 5 to 6 years old in Selangor in collaboration with Kasim Chin Community Foundation. They also contributed over 580,000 in cash and more 600 cartons of FNN milk and soya products. The second dimension is the workplace. The first program is the launch of the Fraserian Connect app. This app serves as a faster and more efficient communication tool to all employees as well as keeping them up to date with the latest news. The second program is the employee safety training. This training provided topics such as self-management, enhancing communications, professional writing, people management, and also working as a team in remotely working environments. Hi everyone, I will explain about the company marketplace related CSR activities and environment related CSR activities for year 2020. First, let me start with marketplace related CSR programs. FNN has done Halal Sourcing Partnership Program, partnering with Halal Industry Pro Development Program. This program acts as a best practice and provides technical advice and knowledge to SME companies and coach them to become qualified halal vendors for multinational companies. Next, FNN also did become the official partner for National Sports Council as the sponsorship using FNN 100 Plus Isotonic Ring as the ambassador. As per environment related CSR program, FNN did organize Recycle for a Life Cycle program in 2020 at Kuching, Sarawak, and Seberang, Prai Pinang by advocating 5R, which is Reduce, Reuse, Recycle, Rethink, and Reinvent. FNN also did Save Our Seas program in Pulau Redang, Terengganu to rehabilitate coral reefs and encourage responsible behaviour on beach among communities. Assalamualaikum, now I'm going to present about FNN Corporate Governance Practices of 2019 and 2020. Just so you know, it consists of three principles which are Principle A, B and C. I'm going to briefly explain Principle A which is Port Leadership and Effectiveness. As you can see on the slide, Corporate Governance Practices for 2019 and 2020 are not much different with each other. Put here target the same like the first one for responsibility, provide entrepreneurial leadership to establish sustainability value and growth of the group. Second is board composition, which is crucial as it ensures the existence of mixed skills, experience and other relevant attributes. Last but not least is remuneration. For this part, the board established remuneration committee to determine suitable policies of salary packages for executive director, CEO and senior executive. Other information are available on the company's website and financial statement. Thank you. The audit committee of the company comprises four non-executive directors, three of whom, including the chairman of the audit committee, are independent directors. All members of the audit committee are financially literate, possess an appropriate level of expertise and experience to enable them to discharge their duties and responsibilities version to the audit committee's TOR. The board is responsibility for ensuring that financial statements are prepared in accordance with the company's Act 2016 and applicable approved accounting standards in Malaysia so as to give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company and the group. The responsibilities of audit committee is to review the quarterly reports and annual financial statements focusing particularly on compliance with applicable financial reporting standards and they review the other legal requirements, change in major accounting policies and practice, implementation of new accounting policies and practice and the next is financial reporting issues and or they also assist the board among others to oversee the group's external and internal audit functions and the last one is review any related and recurrent party transaction and the relevant procedures to ensure the compliance with the listing requirements. Under the existing practice, the Audit Committee invites external auditors to attend all meetings of the Audit Committee. In addition, the Audit Committee will also have private meeting with the external auditors without the presence of the CEO and senior management to enable a change of views on issues requiring attention. During the financial year 2019, the Audit Committee had met with the external auditors once without the presence of the CEO and senior management. The Audit Committee conducts an annual assessment of the external auditors. Areas of assessment include audit scope and planning, adequacy of specialist support and partners, or Director's stability and time commitment, audit communications to the audit committee, audit and non audit phase. 
Feedback based on the assessment areas is obtained from the audit committee, the CEO and the senior management. In support of the assessment on independence, the external auditors provide the audit committee with a written uh, assurance confirm confirming their independence throughout the conduct of the audit engagement in accordance with the relevant professional and regulatory requirements. Premised on the assessment result, the audit committee makes recommendation for reappointment of external auditors accordingly. The board acknowledges its responsibility to maintain a sound risk management and internal control system to manage and mitigate significant risks across the group and to safeguard stakeholders' interests and the group asset. The board has established an effective risk management and internal control framework within the group. Next, the board through this SRM committee and audit committee continually reviews and ensures the adequacy and effectiveness of the group risk management and internal control system. The SRM committee at its quarterly meeting reviews the implementation of the risk management framework as well as deliberates on the business risk and the mitigating controls to address the risk identified. Next, internal control framework. The internal audit function reports directly to the audit committee. Mr. Albert Law was appointed as the head of internal audit on 17 September 2019. Based on the internal audit chart, the internal audit function should maintain a quality assurance and improvement, improvement program to evaluate the conformance of internal audit activities to the international standards for the professional practice of internal auditing and the code of ethics. The set, the set program includes internal audit function, self-assessment on every two years and assessment by a qualified independent consulting firm at least once every five years. The statement on risk management and internal control provides an overview of the group's risk management and internal control framework as well as the adequacy and effectiveness of the framework. Communication with stakeholders, FNN maintains a corporate website at www.fn.com.my which provides information relating to among others, animal report, quarterly financial reports, analyst briefing materials, corporate information, announcement, board charters, TORs of board committees and relevant policies of the group. Shareholders and the public can also direct their question through the email contacts provided on the corporate website. The board has in place a shareholder communication policy which is published on the company's website. Conduct of general meetings, the annual general meeting or AGM is especially important for individual shareholders as it is the principal forum for dialogue with the board. Notice of AGM and annual report are sent to the shareholders at least 28 days ahead of the AGM date to encourage shareholders to attend the AGM. During the AGM, the board and management take questions from the shareholders present. All resolutions put to general meetings will be voted by pool. FNN has adopted electronic voting for the conduct of pools on all resolutions since its AGM in 2017. That's all from me. Thank you. For my part, I will be concluding this assignment. FNN remains committed to fulfilling its responsibilities as a good corporate citizen by acting ethically and responsibly in all areas of their operations. FNN aspires to contribute to local communities, reduce their impact on the environment, deliver product and service excellence to consumers, and promote a supportive working environment for workers by incorporating best practices into the way they conduct businesses. Sustainability at FNN is driven by a deep commitment to make the world, make the world a better place to live in. The group plays its part to help everyone everywhere enjoy the same rights to a good life while meeting our obligations to people who matter to us. That includes their customers, employees, business, business partners, shareholders, and even society at large. To serve the needs of society, they have also made it the mission to protect the environment. Corporate social responsibility is a way to give back to society and thank customers for their loyalty. CSR is important as it helps to attract and retain employees. CSR efforts help to foster a more productive and positive working environment. It also promotes volunteering and positive efforts from the employees. Lastly, CSR is an easy way to win over the customers in the competition in the business world. The efforts can win over customers as well as develop a platform to market and earn their audience's attention. That is all from our group. Thank you for your attention.